Hello and welcome to this audio service by the Rosendale Methodist Circuit. What you'll hear shortly is a recording of a service that usually takes place at Longhome Methodist Church in Rottenstall on Tuesday mornings at 10am. This is a live recording, so do expect some background noise, although we've tried to reduce this as much as we can. The hymns, unfortunately, have to be removed for copyright reasons, but we've suggested some links to versions of the hymns below this video. Good morning and welcome. In this week of Armistice Day and Remembrance Sunday coming up, of course, at the end of, or the beginning of next week, I thought we'd sort of focus on, on that theme. And uh, I've called this the three R's. The three R's. <laughs> Not reading, writing, arithmetic, no. Remembrance, resurrection and reconciliation. Remembrance, resurrection and reconciliation. So we start with the words of the prophet Micah in chapter 4 with this wonderful promise of what will eventually take place. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised up above the hills. People shall stream to it and many nations shall come up and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples, and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees. And no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. For all the peoples walk, each in the name of its God. But we, we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Amen. A wonderful promise, that beating of swords into plowshares. I probably mentioned last year, I think, that uh, the United Reformed Church in Garstang, they have a plow there, an old-fashioned plow that would have been drawn by horses. But it's not made in the regular way. It's actually made out of machine guns and spears and swords. And it's on display in their Garden of Remembrance. So if you're in Garstang, pop down to the United Reformed Church and have a look at it because it's a a brilliant work of art, but it represents that reading perfectly. We worship a God of grace, a God of glory. And let us pray. Almighty God, as we pray in the words of that hymn for wisdom and courage to be ministers of your peace, your message of the good news of Jesus Christ. So we praise you that you are a God of mercy. And we are your unworthy servants. But we give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness. We praise you for our creation for all the blessings of this life. But above all, we bless you for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, who through his death and resurrection has provided for us the means of grace and the hope of glory. And give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may always be filled with thankfulness and that we might show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives. May we give ourselves up to your service and walk before you in holiness and in a right relationship with you for the whole of our lives. 
And as we thank you for the forgiveness which is ours in and through Jesus Christ. And once again for all your blessings to us. We offer you our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. It seems that we live in a world which is full of aggression, division and broken relationships. Well, here's some of Jesus' teaching on all of those issues, which is the famous passage from Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. On Sunday evenings at six o'clock, there's a, a group of faithful people who pray around um, well, not so much around the cenotaph, but in the shadow of the cenotaph. And, uh, and, and David here leads that. And over the last couple of weeks, he's introduced us to the words of Habakkuk. And Habakkuk in his little book says, How long, O Lord? How long? And when we look around the world and see the wars that, that are raging, sadly, in so many places, but as we think about Ukraine, which is really foremost in our minds, you know, we ask the question, when will it stop? Is it possible to break this cycle of hatred, of violence, of war? Well, I would suggest that if we follow the three R's, remembrance, resurrection and reconciliation, there is hope. If it's not possible, to break the cycle of hatred, of violence and war. What's the point of remembrance? Well, as far as remembrance goes, as we know what that means, we remember in the church, as we will do this week, and we will give thanks for those who have run their earthly race and now await Christ's second coming. Those gathered at a remembrance service remember those who've lost their lives or been injured due to war. And we remember not only those who died in two world wars, but those of other conflicts and acts of terror, and the victims of ongoing conflicts, which seem to have no end in sight. Yemen, Afghanistan, and now, of course, in the Ukraine. And nor do we simply remember just those in uniform, but civilian casualties too. And it's also good to remember the death and destruction caused to the animal world and to our environment. In war, there are no winners. But thankfully, remembrance is an act of honest recollection, if you like. You know, before we had books and TV documentaries and the news bringing the wars directly into our living rooms, Wars lived on as part of a nation's folk memory. And it suited everyone to remember the last campaign in a glorious light. So the reputation of the king or queen's ancestors was safe. 
and people will be ready to support their leader when the next call to arms came. You know, I remember you know, the various tribes in that country which shall not be named. You know, the stories that were told of the tribal battles. But the stories are always told by the victors, aren't they? You know, the losers never get to write the history. And they would be, oh, you know, it was such a glorious battle and all of this stuff. Which is absolute nonsense, really. Because people would suffer on both sides. But thankfully, we don't glorify war in the same way today. In remembrance, we recall with honest, honor, honesty and humility the horror of war, the wasted lives and the tragic heroism. But even in that honesty, we still don't seem to learn any lessons from history, do we? There's a prayer written by Kate Machalhaga called Show Us the Way to Peace. Hiroshima, Bosnia, Afghanistan, the names slip through our fingers like bloodstained beads. As we tell the story, tell us, tell us, tell us the way to peace. Kosovo, Nagasaki, Kershaw, still they come, countless numbers. People hounded, refugees tramping the road out of hell into hell. Where will it stop? Show us, show us, show us the way to peace. Five for sorrow, ten for joy. May what has been sown in pain be reaped in hope. Amen. As we remember, our remembrance becomes an act of thanksgiving. However pointless war most wars have been, however wasteful of lives, it cannot be denied that when the call came, people ventured into battle and risked their lives. And we couldn't, if we're honest, continue to enjoy the life we have if every so often we did not turn and face those who fell, those who were injured and those who were bereaved and say, thank you. I never knew you, but I know your sacrifice and I thank you for it. Rest in peace. So thankfully the story is not all negative. There have been great sacrifices in war. There have been wonderful dreams of better worlds. And as we remember, so we also look forward. And as Christians, we look forward aware of the truth of resurrection. Our second R, remembrance and resurrection. You cannot have the glory and the wonder and the joy of Easter Sunday without the pain and the heartbreak of Good Friday. <clears throat> Many going into war believe or believed in a better tomorrow, an end to injustice, an end to oppression. The invader sent packing and a lasting peace. Just as the people of Ukraine hope for that moment when it comes one day when they will be free again of the invader. But sadly, lasting peace seems to be beyond us. And yet, in spite of that, thanks to the promise of resurrection, the great Christian affirmation still stands. Death is not the end, but a new beginning. Rabindranath Tagore said this, For those with faith, death is not extinguishing the light, but putting out the lamp, because the dawn has come. For those with faith, death is not extinguishing the light, but putting out the lamp, because the dawn has come. And with that dawn, of course, comes resurrection, which with it brings the possibility of reconciliation. A whole new perspective on life. You know, great suffering leads to bitterness, anger and hate. So there is always a need after a nation, tribes, communities have been through a time of warfare. There's this need for healing 
and need for reconciliation. After every conflict, there is a need to build peace. But how? Well, first it needs someone to break the cycle of violence, to break that thirst for revenge. You know, we saw it for so many years in Northern Ireland, the sufferings of the peoples there, until finally one day, a group of brave people stepped into the centre of it all in the name of peace. A father in Warrington who lost his son. A father in Enniskillen, wasn't it? Who lost his daughter. They stood up and cried out, no more. And the politicians heard them and they stood in that place of peace and they brought about that peace and reconciliation. And that work still goes on. It's not easy, we know. And in South Africa, the same with Archbishop Desmond Tutu and the, you know, the group that uh, practiced that reconciliation, the Hope and Truth Reconciliation Commission. And Des uh, Nelson Mandela as well. There are people, thankfully, thank God, who are willing to step into the centre to break that cycle. Many, many years ago, there was a man called Telemachus. He was a monk who lived in the fourth century. And he felt God saying to him, go to Rome. And he was living in a cloistered monastery at the time. But he was faithful to that call to go to Rome and he put his possessions in a sack and set out on his journey. So when he arrived in Rome, people were, he found that people were thronging the streets. He asked what all the excitement was about and was told that this was the day that the gladiators would be fighting and killing each other at the Colosseum. This was the day of the games, the circus. He thought to himself, four centuries after Christ and they're still killing each other for enjoyment. Telemachus ran to the Colosseum and heard the gladiators saying, Hail to Caesar! We die for Caesar. And he thought, this isn't right. He jumped over the railing and went out into the middle of the arena, got between two gladiators, held up his hands and said, In the name of Christ, forbear. The crowd protested and began to shout, Run him through! Run him through! A gladiator came over and hit Telemachus in the stomach with the back of his sword. It sent him sprawling in the sand. He got up and ran back again and said, In the name of Christ, forbear. And the crowd continued to chant, Run him through. One gladiator came over and plunged his sword through the little man's stomach. He fell into the sand, which began to turn crimson with his blood. One last time he gasped out, in the name of Christ, forbear. A hush came over the 80,000 people in the Colosseum. Soon a man stood and left, then another, and then more. And within minutes all 80,000 had emptied out of the arena. It was the last known gladiatorial contest in the history of Rome. Telemachus. A brave monk. But there have been others, haven't there, down through the centuries who've stood in that place of peace and brought about reconciliation. I'm sure you can think of many. But in the light of all of this, of remembrance, resurrection and reconciliation, there has ultimately got also to be an act of dedication. It'd be futile to remember and to give thanks if we didn't try our utmost to avoid future wars. So we pledge, we dedicate ourselves to fight the wars that really will hopefully end all wars. The war against poverty. The war against injustice. The war of good versus evil. As we've been reminded again and again recently, the spiritual battle of good versus evil. The wars against corruption the war against the lust for power, the wars against false gods in this age. So we dedicate ourselves to fighting those wars.
And God calls us to pray and to work for a more just and caring world in the power of the Holy Spirit. If we are to be peacemakers ourselves, as we follow the three R's of remembrance, resurrection and reconciliation, we too must find the courage to break the chain of violence and to stand in the place of peace. Amen. And so let us pray. God of love and peace, we pray for your church throughout the world. By your Holy Spirit, draw your scattered people into visible unity and make your church a sign of hope to our divided world. We pray for our country, we pray for the Commonwealth, and we pray that you would give wisdom and strength to the King, to those who govern and make the laws. We pray that you would guide those who direct our common life and grant that together we may seek the welfare of the whole people. We pray for those in authority in every land Give them wisdom to know and courage to do what is right. Encourage all who work for peace, who strive to improve international relations, who seek new ways of reconciliation and bringing people back together. We pray for all those who are left homeless, for the refugees, for the hungry, for the oppressed. And we especially remember again today the people of Ukraine, not just threatened by the violence and the horror of war, but now by the threat of cold and the lack of power. Lord, we pray for an end to the suffering. We pray for peace and we pray for that person or those people who will be brave enough to stand in the place of peace. And as we think about the spiritual battles going on, we pray that those spirits of darkness which seem to walk the land in Russia, and especially in the corridors of power. We pray against them in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. And we pray that that light will cast out the darkness and change hearts and minds from hearts of stone to hearts of flesh. Almighty God, help us to live in peace, to work for a world where evil and poverty are banished, and human life reflects the radiance of your kingdom. And rejoicing in the communion of saints, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storms of this world into the peace of your presence. And we give you thanks for those dear to us whose memory we treasure. Grant that we, at the last, may receive with them the crown of life that never fades. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we share together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
and we hope you enjoyed the service. You can find us online on www.rosendalemethodistcircuit.co.uk and also on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Please do let us know what you thought of this service in the comments below and you can always contact us by email at rosendalemethodistcircuit at gmail.com.